Michael with Performance Trail Braking. Today I'm here to talk to you about the benefits of disc brakes over the OEM drum brakes that uh, are on most of the trailers today. Made it all up. We, everybody's made it to the top. Well, let us bring you down safely. Uh, and we're going to do that by putting disc brakes on trailers. The electric brakes that are on the trailers today, uh, pretty much across the board by all manufacturers, in reality, are the same as what Lucy and Desi took to the mountains back in the 1950s. So uh, that they've been around forever. They haven't really been changed much. Uh, they only provide about 400 to 500 pounds per square inch of, of braking power. During the last 20 years, the uh, industry really hasn't evolved much. Uh, it uh, changed a little bit on the braking system. They've gone to a never adjust that really doesn't necessarily work all the time. Uh, but that's about all they've done as far as changing uh, in changes in the system today. Keep in mind, 400 to 500 PSI. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so really they haven't improved since the 1950s. The same braking power that you're getting at 400 to 500 PSI pressure in reality is the same as what they had in a 1925 Hewitt factory. So now you're, you're stopping this big trailer with the same brakes that they were stopping that truck with. So not a whole lot of difference uh, in, in improvements. Trailer industry, once again, is, is slow to start to evolve in the disc brakes. Uh, they're still not there yet. Uh, some of the manufacturers have gone to it in your higher end mod models, but uh, overall, the majority of them are not offering that system. Uh, so uh, what we're out here to do is to teach you about the disc brakes and uh, give you the ability to actually have them put on your trailer. The new disc brakes today will offer 1,500 pounds per square inch of braking power to each one of the four wheels or six wheels that you have on your trailer. So they greatly improved from 400 to 500 PSI to 1,500 PSI. The benefits of disc brakes. Obviously, the best benefit is you can stop better. The uh, disc brakes today uh, will stop your trailer and, and about 50% less distance and time. Brake fade. Uh, the trailer brakes today, because of the way they're made, they do not have near as much brake fade. They do not increase the friction uh, causing the heat that uh, are caused by the drum brakes. There's no adjustments necessary. The only adjustment that you could ever really need to do is in your truck when you actually adjust your, your brake controller itself. Another big key point is they're equal and full pressure in all, what, all four tires or six tires. Uh, so you're not getting a, a, a swaying motion, fishtailing by putting on your brakes. It's going to stop all four wheels or six wheels at the same time. Longer wear period, the, the drum, uh, disc brakes pads last approximately 30 to 40 percent longer than your drum brake pads, and you also have less wear and tear on your truck brakes, and we'll cover that a little bit later as we go along. As I said earlier, the, the disc brakes can stop your trailer within you know 50 percent shorter distance in time. Uh, in order for Dexter to sell the brakes up into Canada, the Canadian government may then reach out to an independent testing company. And during that test, what they did is multiple iterations, that re independent testing results found out that they will stop their trailer in half the distance in time. Now that's new drift disc brakes versus new drum brakes. So it's an apple to apple change, and it's not uh, as a note, we're not using your truck F brakes at all in that situation as we're only using your trailer brakes completely. Once again, some of the benefits of the brakes, disc brakes over drum brakes, is less brake fade. 
because all your, your heat is all generated from these large pads that are actually trying to ride right inside this drum, uh, it, it actually can build up quite a bit of heat pressure. And that heat is what actually ends up going into your brake fan. The uh, disc brake, though, you're only looking at heat from this area right here on both sides of the rotor, uh, dissipating the heat quite a bit uh, and reducing that brake thing by 80%. No adjustments necessary. Uh, the, the drum brakes, uh, once again, they had about seven or eight different parts and you had to constantly adjust the, the, the braking system uh, adjustment to make sure that they work properly. With the disc brakes, once again, there is no adjustment necessary. Full and, and equal pressure in all four tires. Once again, that is a really a, a key situation because when you're stopping your trailer, if your brakes are not working on all four wheels at the same time, what's happening is you can actually get braking on one side of your trailer and not your other which will cause you to fishtail when you actually put on your brakes. Where the disc brakes, they work all or nothing, so it's one simultaneous stopping power to all wheels on your trailer, uh, making it a nice, smooth stopping situation. We talked about brake, uh, the use of the brake pads. What a lot of people ask me, well, how long are, do the disc brake pads actually uh, work, you know, how long is it going to take before I need to replace them? Well, I really can't say for sure. Uh, what I can tell you though is everybody uses their braking power on your truck a little bit different. Some people like it lighter, some people like it heavier. So if you like it on the lighter side, you're going to get more use out of those brake pads. If you like it more of a heavier brake, you're not going to quite get as much. But what I can tell you is the old owner of the company, when we, we purchased it before, he bought him a brand new Redwood trailer uh, and had disc brakes put on it. And then he waited one year. And exactly one year later, he had the brakes taken off and re-evaluated, checked thickness of the pads and everything. And after 23,768 miles, basically 24,000 miles that he drove in that one year, he still had 60 to 70 percent of brake pad remaining on the the, uh, the pads from the disc brakes. So gives you an idea. Uh, you're definitely going to get a lot more use out of the disc the disc brake pads than you would the drum brake pads. At the same time, he took his truck in there where he bought his trailer. And he took his truck in and had a full brake job done on his truck. After that same year, he had driven 80,000 miles and he had only used 25 to 30% of his brake pads on his truck. So therefore, it actually will reduce the maintenance costs uh, that you have on your vehicle itself. It's a lot cheaper to replace the brake pads on your trailer than it is taking these vehicles into the shop, having them change them there. Let's talk about the components a little bit. Uh, the, the main part of the components for the system is the actuator. And what, what the actuator is, it is basically an a, a electric, pump, uh, electric operation which is operating a hydraulic pump. So you're using your brake controller in your vehicle, you put your foot on the brake, and you're sending a signal to this actuator that then pumps the hydraulic fluid from here back to your four tires where the calipers are at. So this is the actuator. It's a dual reservoir rest actuator where this is all one, one common reservoir. Uh, you fill it, if it's sitting here, you fill this side, this side. That's the reason why the two caps are there. Pretty simple, uh, about the size of a gallon milk jug so you can see about where it would fit. In most cases, we can put this in one of the, uh, uh, the propane tank compartments uh, that they're on, that we see on trailers today. The, the next part that we need to talk about is the drum. 
uh, the, excuse me, the hub rotor and the caliper. This, this is the uh, 8,000 pound axle kit uh, that we can actually put on a 6,000 pound axle if it has 9 16 inch studs already. And then the caliper here on the side, they do come with an oil cap. Uh, the original setup was, they were working on trying to do an, what they call an oil bath. So instead of using grease, they were going to try to use the oil in them. Well, they could not get the seal to, to, to work properly. So they just kept it as it is, and we're using that same cap as, as a grease pad. So we're putting grease in here, and there's not, no oil. Uh, get a lot of calls. Well, that cap says oil. Well, yes, it does, but it, we're, we're recommending using it with grease. Uh, the next part of the kit actually is the brake lines. Uh, there are several different kits out there that people are selling. The best kit that you can use is one kit that has the, the least amount of rubber lines in the system itself. Uh, the, sit, the kit that we use is all hard lines uh, and you just uncoil them, whatever you have to do to, to, to make it straight, go around the top. They all come pre-flared, ready to go. Each kit that we have, it, for each wheel you have one 18 inch rubber line that goes from the frame of the trailer down to the caliper. And then the only other rubber line is, is a 12 inch rubber line that we come off the top the front of the actuator with to go to the, uh, to the hard line. So, a kit that has very few items in it that, that are rubber. Uh, the problem with rubber lines is that rubber, when you start to put it under pressure, it will expand. And the more rubber line that you have, the more lag time that you can put into to the system. Therefore, you're, uh, you're actually extending the time from when you put your foot on the brake to the actual uh, caliper starts to operate and stops your trailer. That's lag time. So more rubber lines equal less lag, uh, more lag time. There are several different kits available. As I said earlier, uh, the main ones for the hub rotor are Titan, Kodiak, Dexter, and, and D-Max is also in there. Uh, you don't hear much about the D-Max system. Uh, the ones that we focus on primarily are the Titan and the Kodiak. Uh, not so much the Dexter proprietary kit because that's a, a kit that you can only buy parts from from, from Dexter uh, and uh, the replacement parts are quite, quite expensive compared to, to the other two. And then uh, the same thing with the, the, uh, the actuator. There's three different types of actuators. Uh, the, Titan brake ride actuator, the Hydrostar actuator, and then the Dexter actuator. Uh, now we'll talk about why actuators are, which one is best here in the next slide or so, uh, but just wanted to let you know there's three different types of actuators. And then brake line kits, pretty much there's a Titan kit and then a Demco kit out there, D-Max kit. Uh, all pretty much the same except for very uh, different versions with more rubber lines in it. So. Let's talk about coatings. The coating that we use is called a Dacrimate coating. Uh, and, and the reason why it's used is because it's, it's cost effective for the RV industry. Uh, it, it, it's about middle of the way as far as rust resistance. Uh, there's five different coatings. Uh, the, the standard coating is just an automotive steel coating. Uh, if you put that in a rain bag, uh, about 10 hours you're going to start developing rust. Uh, most of the time when you buy new vehicles today, those are standard automotive finishes, no, no coatings on them, uh, and, and most of them are rusting sitting on the dealer's lot already. The second coat, in, coat that's available is called the E-coat. Uh, basically, it's 200 to 300 hours of uh, resistance in the rain bay. Uh, 
it, it is a pretty good coating, but just not quite there yet. Uh, still on the inexpensive, uh, more of an inexpensive side, uh, but just not quite as good as the resistance from the, the Dacrimin. And then once again, the middle of the road is a Dacrimin coating. There's a new system out that they have. It's called the Codeguard. Kodiak, right before they were sold out to Dexter, uh, created uh, and, and introduced the Codeguard coating, which basically is the same coating as an E-coat. It, it's just a heavier duty coating uh, than that E-coat. And it gets 600 to 800 hours of, of resistance in the rain bay. Uh, once again, though, it is a little bit more expensive than the Dacrimin. And then obviously the, the best on the market is the stainless steel, uh, which gives zero results in the rain bay. Uh, however, it's about twice the cost of the Dacrimin kit. So it's only really recommended when you're looking at boat trailers, uh, stuff like that. So uh, we, once again, we use, we use the Dacker McCoy middle of the road, best for the RV industry. Let's talk about the calipers. There's, once again, three different major brands of calipers, the Titan and the Kodiak which are basically the same caliper. You can consider them one and the same. Uh, the same as a GMC vehicle and a Chevrolet vehicle. Uh, same vehicle, same manufacturer basically, just a different name on them. And then the other one is the type, uh, the Dexter Proprietary. It's an older set that's been around for a while. Dexter created it originally. Uh, and we're starting to not see it a whole lot more here. In, in, in this times today, it, it's been uh, less and less every day. Now, let's talk about what the calipers are actually made at, up of. The Titan and the Kodiak both have single caliper uh, piston calipers. Uh, so there's only one piston in them. Uh, so that's only one piston that can go bad in that caliper uh, to cause a problem. Uh, the Dexter one has a dual piston. Uh, which then you start to mess with two pistons working together at the same time, causing some problems there. Uh, a little more maintenance uh, heavily on, on the Dexter uh, caliper because of that dual piston. The coatings, once again, Dacrimin coating on, on the Titan and the Kodiak. Uh, the, the only coating that's available on the whole Dexter kit is the E coating, so you're not getting near as much of the resistance in the, for the, the rainwater and stuff that you got. Pads, and now let's start talking about maintenance of the vehicle, uh, the, the caliper's braking system. The Dexter proprietary caliper, you can only purchase brake pads from Dexter. Uh, they are more expensive, and you have to have a kit set or have somebody that stocks Dexter products uh, to be able to get a set or have ordered them from Dexter. The Titan and the Kodiak kits both use a, a, a standard GM model brake pad. Uh, so what that does is that makes that brake pad available at most auto parts centers. So I have a cross-reference number. You take that cross-reference number down and, and you can buy those brake pads uh, right at your local auto parts store uh, for about a fourth of the cost of what I can sell you, the OEM pads, and uh, probably about uh, an eighth of what it would cost for the Dexter uh, pads to buy them from Dexter. Cost for, per pad, as you can see, quite quite a bit different. Uh, $139 for the Dexter pads, about $25 uh, for, for the pads for the, uh, the other two. And then let's the cost of the caliper itself is quite a bit more, too, also. So uh, the maintenance cost on, on, on the back side is a lot higher with the Dexter kit than it is the Titan and the, uh, the Kodiak. Talk about actuators now a little bit. Here's the three actuators that are on the market. Uh, this is the one we use once again, the Titan uh, Brake Rad EHD actuator, now the, the EHD actuator by Dexter. Here is the original Dexter actuator, and then the Hydrostar actuator. Now I'll talk more about the Hydrostar actuator than I do this 
uh, the texture actuator because not too many people are seeing this actuator around. Uh, it's not being used a whole lot. So the Hyperstar actuator is, is what's being used by uh, several uh, different uh, uh, installers. Uh, Lippert actually, actually puts the Hyperstar actuator on and then also the uh, uh, Moorite also when they do an install put is using that Hyperstar actuator. Now let's let's actually start to look at the makeup of the the actual the different actuators. Uh, the brake rod VHP actuator has five pistons, where the other two have three pistons. So it's pumping a whole lot better. Uh, it's pumping at a higher pressure than the other two. Now the real key part, where it actually starts to get uh, really into the bones and the meat of the, uh, the braking system is how fast these actuators start to operate and complete their operation compared to the others. Uh, take a look at the uh, the, uh, the Hydrostar actuator. I say that Hydrostar, once again, uh, that's what Moride is putting on their trailers and that's what uh, Lippert is actually putting on theirs when, when they do a disc brake install. That actuator doesn't start for, for almost a full second 0.8 seconds. The Dexter, uh, Dexter Hydro uh, EHP actuator actually starts a half second faster than, than the Hydrostar. Now, half second may not sound a, like a whole lot, but that half second equates to 40 feet of, of, of distance that it takes to stop your vehicle in addition to what, uh, what it's already going to take. So the, uh, the Hydrostar actuator starting a, a full half second slower is going to add that 40 feet of stopping distance into, your, into that ability to stop your trailer and where every foot, single foot counts. Now, on the back side, uh, I call it the 90% completion. The Dexter actuator, EHP actuator, is at 90% capacity at 1.1 seconds. Uh, so it's almost completely done its full job, 1.1 seconds. Uh, so basically 0.8 seconds after, or 0.5 seconds after the type of the Hydrostar actuator started. And look at the differences between the three actuators as far as uh, being almost done with it. So this, the, uh, the Dexter, EHP actuator is done well over a second faster than that's 80 feet uh, per second. So uh, it, it gives you a lot better stopping distance altogether. Once again, the brake lines, here's a little bit of an idea of what the brake lines looks like. Uh, this is the kit that performance trailer braking uses. Uh, this is a kit that some of the other uh, installers do use. Uh, companies out there that are doing the brakes uh, seem very heavily reliant on rubber lines. Once again, that rubber will expand, causing more lag time to be put into the system. Some of the other items uh, that we sell and install uh, while we're doing disc brakes on your trailers is uh, tires and wheels, uh, shackles, wet bolt kits, axles and springs that we use from Dexter. We recommend using Dexter stuff. Uh, it, it, it is just uh, the uh, best of the, the stuff that's on the market, not in my view. And then also, once again, equalizers, uh, the Moorite SRE and CREs. So uh, those are just some of the items that we can install along with disc brakes. And uh, where can we install them? Well, at some point during the year, I can have installers that will cover the lower 48 states. Uh, so if you live up in Maine uh, once a year or so, I can at least get somebody up there uh, to do an install up there. Or California uh, over in this area, uh, definitely all summer long. But yes, I can, I can cover the largest part of the United States with the installers at least once a year. And when you do buy disc brakes from us, we, uh, we have what we call the 50-50 uh, referral plan. 
What that is, is we feel that your knowledge and, and the ability to talk about how good your brakes are performing uh, is golden in our, our uh, ability to actually keep going selling brakes to the customers. Uh, so when you talk about how good your brakes are to your neighbors, and if they give me your name and purchase brakes from us, we'll send you a check for $50. Well, in order to get that customer to give us your name, we'll send uh, give them a $50 discount off the, the, the brakes when they buy the brakes from us. So that's what we call our 50-50 referral. Uh, that's an unlimited amount of referral, so if you keep going, you know, you could technically uh, uh, pay for your brakes yourself. Uh, haven't seen that happen yet, but, it, but technically it could happen. Any questions? Uh, in, in this kind of situation, it's kind of hard to do questions, uh, but uh, I am available for questions at any time. Uh, and uh, we'll make sure that our, my phone number is available uh, during this presentation, and that, that way uh, we can uh, talk via telephone, answer any of your questions that you have. Uh, thank you, and have a good day. Uh, that's, uh, once again, I'm Michael from Performance Trailer Breaking. Hopefully that you've learned something about this breaks today. Have a good day. Hello, once again, I'm Michael from Performance Trail Breaking. I just wanted to take a little bit of time and talk to you about uh, the suspension products on your trailers. Uh, we at Performance Trail Breaking have uh, married up with More Right. Uh, we're the, technically the only install uh, dealership that can buy directly from More Right. So it makes it pretty good for us. We can pass it at uh, pricing down to uh, the customer when we can. So, but let me talk to you about a few things. Uh, the first thing I want to talk to you about is the Morai Heavy Duty Shackle Kit. Uh, the major difference between the, the shackle kits that you're seeing uh, from Dexter or uh, the Lipper, basically, uh, here's the two comparisons. Uh, you can see this one is a, a quarter of an inch thick here, where this one is a full half inch thick. Uh, this is also a stamped steel, where this is a forged steel. Uh, so it makes it a lot stronger. Uh, also, uh, there's two types of bolts that you will see in the system today on your trailers. Uh, one is a wet bolt. This is what you really, uh, most of us are looking for. Uh, it gives us the ability to grease that bolt, uh, put some grease in between it and the, sh and the, the, sh uh, the bushing itself. Uh, the other one is just a dry bolt. It's a plain bolt, uh, nothing real major. Uh, it, it, the shack, uh, bushings that you will see out there are plastic, bronze bushings, and still with bronze bushings, if they're not greased, you're still going to end up with problems. Uh, and down the road, you'll need to replace those shackles and, and uh, bushings quite a bit up, down the road. So your best option for a shackle kit is the Morai uh, heavy duty shackle kit that's available today. Now, what, what makes this system better than in the old system? Well, what happens is that this being a soft steel uh, stamp out of it, what happens is that eventually it starts to pound back and forth here. And what over, over, over a period of time will increase this oval where it's actually started out to be a round circle. It will turn into an oval, and eventually what happens is it will rip that end of the, sh the shackle right off of there, and uh, you can see your, uh, excuse me there, your shackle that you got here will not be together, and you can actually have your springs come apart from it. So that's the difference in the wet bolt kits uh, that you'll see today. Also, the next item I wanted to talk about is the CRE 3000. Uh, the difference between the CRE 3000 and the SRE 4000, besides the way it looks, it, is really not a whole lot of difference, uh, except for the SRE will give you one inch of additional travel width than the CRE will. Uh, the CRE 3000 will give you three additional inches of travel, where the SRE will give you four. Uh,
Yeah, the CRE will give you three inches of additional travel on your suspension, where the SRE will give you four additional inches. Well, where that comes into it is basically your tires mounted to your trailer is this movement of your tire that we're talking about, three to four inches more travel uh, that's available. So uh, the SRE is rated up to a 4K spring, uh, 8K axle, where the CR, uh, the SRE is only actually rated to a, a 7K, 3,500-pound spring. Even though that this looks smaller, it's actually rated a more compa and compatible with the larger axles. So if you have 7,000-pound axles, you need to uh, uh, think and you're looking for the maximum amount of travel, the SRE 4000 would be the one that you would look for. Uh, if you're looking for maybe to go to 8K axles uh, with the 4K springs, uh, at the CRE 3000 is the one that you would look for. Now, uh, one item that comes, which makes the SRE and the CRE different, besides the fact that the SRE will raise your trailer, about an inch more than what it is. So you have to be careful with that raising that trailer. You may already be at that 13.6 height. Uh, can you go that additional inch? Uh, you may not be able to. So the SRE, if you're setting at 13.6, once again, would not be the way to go. Uh, the CRE 3000 would be the way because it will not raise your trailer at all. Now, the, the other difference between the SRE and the CRE is the SRE uh, Morite has partnered up with a, a, what they call an X-Factor cross member. Now this is a, a demo mock-up of the cross member. Basically what the cross members do is, is they straddle from one set of spring hangers. So basically you've got this part on your trailer welded to the bottom of the I-beam on your trailer and then your springs and your equalizer is connected to it. Well. There's another one just like that on the far side of your trailer. Well, Morai makes a product that will bolt onto the system and span that distance to make these more of, of a rigid, uh, firm place in, on the trailer, uh, which will not be spinning back, uh, twisting back and forth, uh, which will reduce the ability for you to, to have this break on you. So uh, we can also put this cross member on with an SR, a CRE also, uh, so that that is available. Uh, I recommend, you know, one is good, two is better, three is best. So if you can put three on a tandem axle, uh, I recommend go ahead and we're doing all three, uh, but at least put one on there. So uh, that's, once again, that's the cross member, uh, the SRE 4000 and the CRE 3000. There's one additional type of suspension product that's out there that is actually starting to be a, a big item that's available today. Uh, performance trailer braking has, has actually been doing quite a few of them. Uh, we're getting some really good uh, signals from, from the owners that we've done that, that it's a great product. And, and, and in reality, probably a little bit better than, than the Morite stuff. Uh, don't tell Morite I said that, but uh, it looks like it's actually being a better system. Now, it, that's called the, the Slipper Springs and Shock System by Roadmaster. I don't have anything to show you about it, uh, but I will also add, add some links to it uh, so you can actually go and take a look at that product. But I just wanted to let you know that there is a, an additional option out there uh, today for s suspension upgrades, and that's uh, the, Mori, or the, excuse me, the Roadmaster Slipper Springs and or shock system that's available. Thank you and have a good day.